Hello and welcome everyone to the Counselor Advocacy for the Jewish University Experience Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for being here today. We have a wonderful group of institutions in today's session and I'm going to turn it over to them in just a moment, but before we get started, a few housekeeping announcements about today's event. You have your camera and microphone off today, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, there is a Q&A button in the middle of your screen, and that Q&A function is on throughout the entire event. So if you have questions for any and all of our institutions today, go ahead and use that Q&A function at any time, and our panelists will keep an eye on it to answer your questions. Of course, this is one of many different sessions happening, so make sure you take a look at the schedule and sign up. There are two more session slots taking place right after this event. But if you can't get to all of them, this presentation, along with all of the others, are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash Jewish Student Fair. I'll put that link in the chat for you all. But now to our main event, we're going to kick it off with our first institution. Starting us off is Indiana University Bloomington. Take it away when you're ready. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Brandi Sambaru, and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions for Indiana University, my alma mater. I have the, it, Indiana was established in 1820, and IU has built a strong tradition of excellence both in and out of the classroom. Um, from, any, from nationally recognized academic programs to Division I Varsity Big Ten Athletics, all on one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. IU will offer you a rich experience inside the classroom and out. With about 33,000 undergraduate students that hail from all 50 states and over 140 different countries, IU will be able to offer you um, geographic diversity of our student body, but also its ethnic, religious, political, and social economic diversity that makes our learning community rich. Now, at the heart of an IU education, um, it is our 12 schools, which offer more than 200 majors for you to choose from, meaning there's something for everyone. Students will be able to work with academic advisors and faculty to create an academic program that is uniquely customized, whether that's a double major, multiple minors, or even creating your own major through our individualized major program. Our average class size is 30 with a student to faculty ratio of 16 to one and fewer than 6% of our classes have 100 or more students in them. We really do try to focus on that hands-on learning experience, that collaborative learning experience at IU. IU Student Support Services help students succeed during their time at Indiana and beyond through our individualized academic advising, academic support centers throughout campus and our Wells Library Learning Commons. Students have access to tools to help them become the best student they can be. I use career services help students begin their careers before they leave campus by starting early and finishing strong. Our career development centers help students who are still exploring their options understand the skills and interests and help them navigate the IU majors that will work with them. Now, over about 30% of our students do study abroad once, at least once before they graduate. IU offers over 300 different study abroad programs in more than 50 different countries and 18 different languages, including English. And more and more, we are seeing students combining their overseas study experience with an internship or hands-on research experience. At IU, what you learn outside of the classroom is gonna be just as valuable as what you learn in, the in your classes. With over 750 student clubs and organizations, as well as more than 55 club and intramural sports and a thriving arts and culture community that boasts over 1800 performances on campus every year. From watching our opera stage by the world-class Jacob School of Music to touring the Eskenazi Museum of Art, you'll find the cultural resources at IU and in Bloomington will rival that of a much larger city. Now, Hoosier Spirit is also alive and well on our campus. Most of our athletic events are free to our students and Assembly Hall boasts the largest student section in NCAA basketball. Hoosier football along with women's basketball and baseball have risen to national prominence over the last few years while men's soccer and men's and women's swimming and diving continue to be perennial Big Ten and national championship contenders. Now for our Jewish students, we do have a lot to offer you as well. This slide just highlights a few of the community building opportunities you could participate in. Overall on campus, about 12% of our students identify as Jewish, and about 80% do come from outside the state of Indiana. Now, unfortunately, we do not offer a kosher meal plan, but our Hillel does have two kosher kitchens and offers food at Shabbat as well as holiday meals. They also have an open fridge policy. 
Students are excused from classes for holidays per our religious observant policy. We also realize that this is very much a family experience. So we offer a parent and grandparent club as well. Just know that we are here for you. It's all part of our Hoosier hospitality, which is exhibited throughout the state and throughout Bloomington and can be seen on campus through our culture of care. Culture of care is a campus-wide student-led and staff-supported initiative focused on creating a campus culture in which members of the IUB community demonstrate care for one another. Now, how do you get here? Well, I strongly encourage prospective students to apply by our non-binding early action um, deadline of November 1. Applying early action offers students the highest admission and scholarship consideration, and applying early action means lets you in, get your decision from us earlier, enjoying more of that senior year. So what are we looking for? At least 34 college preparatory courses, your cumulative GPA weighted or unweighted, SAT and or ACT scores if applicable to you as we are test optional, as well as that application essay. Just to kind of give you an idea, here's our middle 50% ranges for this year, 3.6 to 4.0, 1160 to 1370 on the SAT or 25 to a 32 on the ACT. Students can submit a complete application to IU through either our internal application, apply IU, or through the common application. The application fee and the essay are the same on both platforms. In addition to the application, we do require an official high school transcript. Students can self-report their test scores on their application through or apply through our test optional policy. Whatever the student feels is the best to tell their academic story. Students applying through IU's test optional policy will still have full access to merit scholarships and direct admission programs, as long as you complete your application by our early action deadline of November 1. So thank you all so much for your interest in Indiana University, and please let our office know how we can help you explore all the amazing things that there are in Bloomington. Thank you. Awesome. What a great way to get us started today. Thank you so much, Indiana University Bloomington. We are going to head now to the University of Hartford whenever you're ready. Okay. Let's... Great. Um, so my name is Lisa Langsner. I am the director of Jewish Student Life at the University of Hartford. Um, we the Office of Jewish Student Life is a part of the university. So Emma Schrumpf is here with me as well. Um, and she serves as the manager of programming and engagement for Hillel and the Office of Jewish Student Life. So um, for the University of Hartford is made up of seven schools. There's the Art School, the Hart School, the Barney School of Business, College of Engineering, Technology and Architecture, Education, Nursing and Health Professions, Hillier College, which is a two year associates program um, for students who need some extra assistance, has smaller class sizes, targeted um, educational opportunities, and then the College of Arts and Sciences. We are currently finishing up a brand new building um, for engineering and health sciences, which will house our expanded engineering program and the brand new um, nursing program, which is a bachelor's in nursing into a master's. So the University of Hertford has about 5,500 students, about 20% or so um, are Jewish. We have 100 student clubs and organizations, academic clubs, athletics. Um, we have many uh, Greek organizations, including honors organizations, um, religious clubs. Hillel is a club on campus. It's one of the Jewish organizations, um, and it is a part of what Emma and I do on campus. There are 400 plus performances each year from the Hart School, which is a theater and music program that all students are welcome um, and encouraged uh, to attend, and many do. We have 17 Division I athletics teams, um, and there, there really is a lot um, for such a small school. Uh, to apply to the University of Hartford, uh, the admission requirements are either the UHART application or the common application, a personal statement, optional test scores, and letters of recommendation. 
The admission deadlines are November 15th and December 15th. And then in January, they begin with rolling admission. Um, many, many students who apply for the University of Hartford get scholarships and aid. Um, the average student package is $27,660, and there is need-based aid as well um, if you complete your FAFSA. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about um, the Office of Jewish Student Life. So there are about 700 Jewish undergraduate students. We have the Maurice Greenberg Center for Judaic Studies, which is um, only opened about three years ago. It's a brand new center, it's very beautiful. We offer a BA and a minor in Judaic Studies. There is a kosher dining station at the, in, at the University of Hartford inside the main commons dining. No separate meal plan is required and many, uh, many students find their food to be the best food on campus. So a lot of students eat there. Um, opening in fall 2021, we have two brand new four person suites with a kosher kitchen, Shabbat lights and switches, self cleaning oven and key access. And these apartments are in the upper class housing area but are open to incoming first year students up until seniors. Students can study abroad for credit in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem and Haifa. And the Office of Jewish Student Life sits under the Office of Student Engagement and Inclusion as part of Student Affairs, and we are full-time employees of the University of Hartford. So that is our information. Um, we'll go back to it again at the end if we need to. Um, so what are the things that we offer Jewish students? We have student leadership, programming, weekly Shabbat meals, um, we do all of the holidays on campus as long as school is in session. The Hill Campus Center is currently located in one of the um, best residential halls uh, and includes a small kosher kitchen, office space, a student lounge. And we also hire federal work study students. There are three historically Jewish fraternities and sororities on campus, AEPI and SDT are um, ones who have been around for a long time and SAE Pi was just recognized last year as a new um, Jewish sorority. So they are expanding. We offer many cohort experiences. We have a first year students of Hillel cohort, a Jewish learning fellowship, and uh, we will be putting students into pods based on um, based on what they're interested in for the fall. So you'll come to campus and immediately enjoy a community of like-minded students to, to hang out with. Um, the, uh, the community of Greater Hartford has an extensive Jewish life, a very vibrant Jewish life. There are many, many synagogues within a 15 and 20 minute drive to campus. The closest ones to our campus um, is Chabad, the Orthodox, um, shul and, and student organization. Um, there's the Emanuel, which is a conservative synagogue that's in walking distance to campus. Um, also within walking distance to campus is the JCC Zacks family campus with the JCC, the Federation, um, the Crown Supermarket is a kosher supermarket that's about a mile and a half from campus as well. And we are in the process of expanding the West Hartford, Hartford A roof to include the University of Hartford. Um, so these are the places you can follow us on social media, uh, and we hope that you do. Wonderful. Thank you so much, University of Hartford. In just a moment, we're going to hear from the List Undergraduate College from the Jewish Theological Seminary. While they get their presentation loaded, I want to remind everyone that that Q&A function is ready to receive all of your questions. Okay, take it away. Okay, fantastic. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Joe Maybloom. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions uh, here at List College, and I'm joined by my colleague Madison, our Assistant Director of Admissions. Um, so I'm talking to you today about List College, which is the undergraduate school of the Jewish Theological Seminary. And all of our students are duly enrolled in programs with either Columbia University School of General Studies uh, or with Barnard College. So. As I said, all of our students are duly enrolled. So it's not a double major. You're actually pursuing two full simultaneous bachelor's degrees throughout your time on campus. 
So you'll complete one bachelor's degree over at either Columbia or Barnard in any area major of your choosing in the liberal arts and sciences. Um, and then you'll also pursue a second full bachelor's degree at JTS. Um, so you'll complete a core curriculum of Jewish studies courses, as well as pursuing a major in one specific area of Jewish studies. Um, so what this offers our students is the ability to actually pursue two full degrees of which they're interested in. So you don't have to choose a Jewish studies major over at Columbia or Barnard because you're getting this full bachelor's degree where you're going beyond what a traditional Jewish studies major may look like at most other colleges or universities. Um, which is what you'll really find in our core curriculum, and then being able to delve deeply into one specific area of Jewish studies as well for your latter half of your college career at JTS. And you can see some of those examples over on the right hand side. But you'll also uh, pursue that full major uh, and degree over at Columbia or Barnard, giving you the chance to immerse yourself in one specific area of the liberal arts and sciences that interest you as well. So to give you a sense of where we're situated, uh, List College is a, a group of about 150 students yearly, but all of our students, as I said, are duly enrolled. So you have two student IDs that gives you access to everything across the JTS community, as well as the Columbia and Barnard campus community. Uh, so we're located in the Morningside Heights area of Manhattan, New York, uh, so uptown. So you'll see that JTS's main building is located up here uh, on 122nd and Broadway, and that Columbia's campus and Barnard's campus begins on 120th Street and then spans down. Uh, you'll also see Columbia Barnard Hillel down here on 115th Street. Uh, so all of our students uh, who are living in our residence hall at JTS, uh, which is located right on 122nd Street, are just about a two minute walk from the start of Columbia's main campus. And you're really immersed in the heart of New York City. You have the one train subway right here at 116th and that gives you access to everything that New York City has to offer. You're downtown uh, into Times Square in about 15 minutes. And then from there, you have access to pretty much any train to get you anywhere else that you wanna go in the city. Um, so our students are really immersed in the city experience. Often all your classes over at Columbia and Barnard and at JTS are taking you out to the Met or to the Jewish Museum, um, or you're having class in Central Park, which is just a few blocks from campus. So you really have the opportunity to not only take advantage of the three campuses in which you're enrolled, but also to use New York City as your campus as well. So as I said, you are able to immerse yourself in two areas of study that you're passionate about and receive those two full bachelor's degrees. And we often find that the skills that our students are gaining throughout their time on campus are really helping them to bridge the gap between college and career. We find that 100% of our students are placed within six months of graduation in either jobs uh, or graduate schools of their choosing. So it gives you the chance to really master your time management skills, grow your leadership abilities, and set yourself apart to future employers. Our students always know what the first question they're going to be asked in a job interview or grad school interview is, and that's what is this program and why did you choose to do it? And our students get really good at answering that question over their four years on campus. Um, and they're able to leverage the networks of connections that they've built at JTS, Barnard, and Columbia to help get into the room for those job interviews, to meet professors, to have the research experiences on campus to allow them to succeed once they are, are moving beyond uh, their undergraduate years. So, as you can expect, Jewish life on campus is incredibly robust. You not only have access to JTS's uh, Jewish community um, and the community that you'll create with our four graduate schools on campus and all of the students enrolled in those graduate schools, but Columbia Barnard Hillel is one of the largest in the country and it is really the center of Jewish life for our students in List College. Um, so you have access to the 40 plus clubs and organizations within Hillel alone, as well as the other 400 plus clubs and organizations of Columbia University at large. List College is uh, committed to a pluralistic view of Judaism. Uh, what you're taught in the classroom is academic Judaism. There's no difference between what you'd learn at JTS versus what you'd learn at Columbia, Barnard, or any other school. Um, but our professors are the ones who are writing the books that are being taught at other colleges and universities across the country. Um, so you're really learning from the highest caliber of Jewish studies scholars, along with the high caliber of professors over at Columbia and Barnard. As I mentioned earlier, uh, all students in our joint program with Columbia uh, are housed in our List College residence hall. 
and students in the Barnard double degree program also have access to live in the residence hall should they choose to. Um, and Ellis College Residence Hall is a unique Jewish living and learning community where our students have access to a community that is built around uh, Jewish student life. So applying to Liss College, you'll submit one singular application to our schools. Um, you, we do have an early decision and a regular decision plan for both the joint program with Columbia and the double degree program with Barnard. Uh, and students are reviewed simultaneously in a committee uh, that is made up of folks from both Columbia or Barnard and JTS. So we're coming together for that joint committee to make a final decision about your application. So I know we're running out of time. So I'm gonna throw up our uh, contact information. Please feel free to reach out with additional questions and put them in the chat. And thanks for joining us. Wonderful, thank you so much, JTS. I know those six minutes fly by, but y'all are doing a stellar job, thank you. Okay, we're going to head now to the Rochester Institute of Technology whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mariah McLean Giardino. I am Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, we're a private university up in Rochester, New York. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities to learn more general information about RIT. I'll share those in the chat, for, but for our brief time today, we're just gonna focus our session on Jewish life at RIT. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Monica Sanford is here from RIT Center for uh, Spiritual and Religious Life. Monica? Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm here to talk about Jewish life at RIT specifically, and Mariah will be very happy to answer any questions that you have about uh, admissions, about any one of our 230 different um, academic programs in uh, our 11 colleges. My computer is doing something strange and I apologize for that. Uh, can you give me a thumbs up, Mariah, if you can see the PowerPoint? I can't, unfortunately, Monica. Okay, I'm gonna stop share and try again. In the meantime, I will say that we have a vibrant Jewish um, community on campus, several hundred Jewish students on our large campus of about uh, 16,000 students. We have two Jewish communities on campus, Chabad and Hillel. They are both very active. I'm sorry, I don't know why the share, share the stop share is not, it, Zoom is not cooperating with me, so I apologize. But we do have um, RIT Hillel and RIT Chabad. RIT Hillel is a wonderful student-led organization. They meet weekly for Shabbat dinner and services, hold high holidays, and Passover seders throughout the year and host many social, um, educational and service-based programs. Chabad is a rabbi-led community. Um, we have a rabbi and family who lives near campus and uh, provides uh, services for the Chabad community. I think we've lost Monica's feed. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't have a copy of her presentation either. So I guess we'll just move on to um, at the next school. Sure, yeah, and then we can come back. Hopefully she'll be able to rejoin us. That's no problem. Let's see who we have here. Uh, let's see, University of Richmond, would you be able to jump in and then we can try to come back to Rochester Institute of Technology? Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to Perfect. do that. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Um, am I allowed to go ahead and start sharing my screen? Yes. Okay. Fabulous. All righty. So good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Heather Selby. I'm an admission officer and for... Heather, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but just so you know, we're seeing the presenter view. So if you want to swap oh, your screens. Oh. Yeah, let me, let me do that real quick. Um, thank you. Of course. That's always, okay, let's see. How about now? It looks great. Perfect, all right. Hey everyone, I'm Heather. Uh, sorry about all the, the Zoom issues today, but thank you for joining me. I'm an admission officer from the University of Richmond in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm actually joined by one of our awesome student ambassadors, Alana, today as well. And we are going to give you 
kind of a tag team presentation with an overview about the University of Richmond. And then Alana is going to step in and tell you a little bit more about her experience being involved in Jewish life on campus. So to go ahead and get started, the University of Richmond is a small private liberal arts university in Richmond, Virginia. Our total population is about 3,000 students. So we really are a smaller size student body. Our average class size at Richmond is only 17 students. That means that our students really do have the opportunity to get to know their classmates and their professors very, very well. And it fosters a strong sense of community on our campus that a lot of our students are very, very much excited about. We also are fortunate to have a beautiful school. So we were actually ranked the number one most beautiful campus in the United States by the Princeton Review for 2021. And although looks certainly are not everything, it's something that we're excited about and proud of. We also are highly ranked for being a top run uh, college in one of the top national liberal arts colleges in the US. So regardless of whether you're joining us uh, from Virginia or from elsewhere in the country, we hope that you'll be interested and excited to learn more about our university. In regards to academics at Richmond, I like to describe the academic environment as one that is collaborative rather than cutthroat or competitive. We do have all of our majors and minors falling into these three undergraduate schools, and these can range anywhere from an accounting major, political science, math, biology, uh, you name it, we have it. Something kind of unique about our liberal arts program is that two and three students at Richmond will either double major or major and minor across these undergraduate schools. Students do not have to declare their major until the end of their sophomore year, so they have plenty of time to explore different options and work with their academic advisors before filling out that form saying what they want to declare in. We value putting what students learn in the classroom into practical experience, and we help our students do so through the Richmond Guarantee. The Richmond Guarantee says that each of our students is guaranteed up to $4,000 in funding to use towards a summer internship or research opportunity. So we recognize that a lot of those competitive internships in Washington DC and New York City aren't paid. And so to make it easier for our students to give up a summer of working for those opportunities, we say that we'll pay them $10 an hour, working 40 hours a week for 10 weeks during the summer. Because of the Richmond Guarantee and our Strong Career Services Program, we are seeing that our students are highly competitive when they exit Richmond um, and get ready for graduate school or full-time employment. In terms of the types of students who we see are interested and successful at Richmond, here we have the class of 2024 student profile. You'll see a lot of numbers on this slide, but what I want to highlight is the fact that we do really like having a diverse student body. And at Richmond, we define diversity as diversity in religion, diversity in race, ethnicity, thought, demographics, and geographic backgrounds. So if you're someone who likes to learn and grow with people who are different than yourself and, and learn through discussions with them, then Richmond could be a really great school for you to check out. If you are interested in learning more about the application process and how we determine who to admit at Richmond, I would strongly recommend that you register for one of our virtual information sessions where we go in depth all about our holistic admission process. But now let's turn it over to student involvement. I'm gonna go ahead and have Alana turn on her audio and video um, and tell you a little bit more about Jewish life on campus. Hey y'all, um, I'm Alana, I'm a rising junior. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a little bit about Jewish life on campus. So we do have a Hillel on campus. Um, it is run by our Jewish chaplain, Josh Jeffries, as well as our Hillel student board, which I myself am a part of. This will be my second year on board. Um, personally, am I, I, pretty much anyone you talk to, do, you're gonna find someone who's gonna say it's a very welcoming community. It really is. Um, we accept, you know, anyone, anyone will have people of other religions come and join us for Shabbat dinners. Um, we'll partner with other organizations and such to hold different, you know, fun events and stuff like that. It really is a truly welcoming community. Um, I actually met one of my best friends through Hillel. Um, but so we do have some, I guess, for program wise, we have every Shabbat or every Friday we have Shabbat. Um, it is kind of relaxed. Um, so, you know, we'll do a couple songs, a couple prayers, and then we'll kind of just do a little own egg or just um, afterwards talk with everyone. We'll have hollow grape juice. Um, and this upcoming year, excitingly, we're supposed to have a Shabbat dinner every other catered every other uh, Friday. So that's very exciting. Um, and we're also looking forward to hopefully trying to come up with a more um, 
uh, what's what, ser not serious, but more uh, traditional or um, service for Shabbat, uh, either maybe every two weeks or once a month, something like that. So that way all students uh, who are Jewish, you know, have some type of um, get to experience something that they um, want to. Um, in addition, we have also had, um, uh, we always host several events. Um, we went to DC one year. Uh, we were gonna go this past year, but we couldn't because of COVID, but we've gone to the Holocaust Museum. Um, we'll have Jewish, we'll play Jewish Jeopardy. We'll uh, do Jews in the News where we just talk about current events going on, whether it has to do with Judaism or doesn't. Um, we'll also um, have porn parties and cook some really good Jewish food. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alana. And thank you all for listening. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me. Um, and thank you very much. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, University of Richmond. We have Rochester Institute of Technology back with us. We're going to see if tech wants to work with us this time around. Go ahead and take it away. Okay, sorry about that. I would like to say that as an Institute of Technology, we've got all of this handled, but as many of you no doubt are also doing, I am calling in from home today. So I don't have my tech support in the building. Uh, so welcome everybody. Again, my name is Monica Sanford and I'm the Assistant Director for Spirituality and Religious Life. You've already met Mariah McLean, who is also on the call and on behalf of admissions and can answer any general questions about RIT that you happen to have. So we Jewish life at RIT is wonderfully vibrant. Just let me tell you a little bit about Rochester Institute of Technology and then I'll get into Jewish life. It's a very large school, 19,000 students at any given time, 16,000 of those are on the campus in Rochester. We do have several other global campuses that we collaborate with and a large number of our students are off campus every semester doing internships and co-ops which are a major part of our academic programs. There are 11 colleges at Rochester with 230 academic programs between them. We are the third largest in STEM with a 12 to one student to faculty ratio, but we're not just geeks, although we love our geeks. We're also at 24 NCAA varsity sports, go Tigers hockey. There are also 300, over 300 clubs and student organizations on campus, including Jewish life. I'll tell you just briefly about admissions. We are test optional and have friendly early decision plans. 77% of our full-time undergraduates receive financial aid, lots and lots of financial aid. There is a first year live on campus requirement unless you're local. And then admissions, the, the different programs themselves have slightly different admissions requirements. So there is an entire table on the admissions website that talk about the different programs and their admissions requirements. Moving on to Jewish life, we're very happy to have on-campus communities for both Hillel and Chabad. We also have uh, Jewish life resources for our deaf Jewish population because Rochester Institute of Technology is home to the National Technical Institutes for the Deaf. So we have lots of support for deaf Jewish, deaf and hard of hearing Jewish students, including community, a community for them known as WOLP. RIT Hillel is our oldest Jewish community on campus. It's been here since 1954. You can find out more at rit.edu slash Hillel or by emailing Hillel at rit.edu. This is a student-led club. It also has Hillel House in Residence Hall B. This is not a residential space. You can't live at Hillel House, but you can certainly hang out there and cook food in the kosher kitchen that's available to students, spend time in the lounges and the workrooms and it's just a great social opportunity. Hillel hosts weekly Shabbat services and dinner, so hot, free, kosher food every week, holiday services and meals, and many service, social, and educational programs. Our other Jewish community is RIT Chabad. You can find out more about them at ChabadRIT.com or by emailing Rabbi Yossi Cohen whose email address is there on the screen. This is a rabbi-led community, but they have a very active student leadership board. Chabad House is located near campus and hosts weekly Shabbat services and dinners. They also hold ho holiday services and meals, as well as service social and educational programs. You'll often see our Chabad and Hillel uh, groups cooperating on social activities, especially around Hanukkah and Purim. 
The Schmidt Interfaith Center is located right in the heart of campus, and that is where you can find Hillel Shabbat services. It's actually attached to the student union. For the last year, Chabad has also been holding Shabbat services there, but we believe um, as the pandemic eases over the next year, they may continue to hold them in the Interfaith Center or they may return to Chabad House. Uh, we're still waiting to make that decision for the fall semester. Kosher food is available on campus right now, has been for several years, but we are making improvements. So pay attention to the RIT dining site for some wonderful announcements coming over the summer about improving our kosher options. The last thing I'll talk about is religious accommodations. We know high holidays are coming up really fast this year, so students can get time off of class to attend holiday services. And they can all they have to do is request it in advance. And if anybody has any concerns about how to do that from each of their various professors, we are there to support you and give you some templates and work with you to make sure that you get those accommodations so that you can attend services. The last thing I'll say is that Jewish life is really led and supported by you, by Jewish students, by Jewish family, by alumni. It is a very involved and engaging program. We offer the Jewish Learning Fellowship last year and students were very engaged, even though last year for the first time it was entirely virtual. There were many students who came to that program and said it was the highlight of their week, despite otherwise having a little bit of Zoom fatigue, I think that we've all experienced this year. Our in-person services also continued last year and many students told us that that was critical for their mental health during this difficult year. So we're very glad to be able to continue those programs um, for the coming year. I'll just leave you here with some important links. You can connect to RIT admissions through their website and email, and you can connect with me as part of spirituality and religious life and learn more about all of our all of the programs we have to offer, including our interfaith programs, of which our Jewish communities have always been greatly involved. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, RIT. So glad we got to hear that presentation. It was a good one. All right. We are going to close out this section of our event today by hearing from Boston University. Take it away when you are ready, Boston University. Great. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Duffy Moran. I'm a senior associate director in the admissions office at BU. I'm joined by Rabbi Ellie Lehman, who will be talking a little bit more about Jewish life on campus once I give some updates around just academic life and a, a general overview of BU. So BU, we're a large private teaching and research university right in the city of Boston. Uh, you can see some general statistics at a glance here, but to discuss BU, I think it's really important to just start with our incredibly diverse student body. We have students coming from over 130 countries, students coming from all 50 states to BU. Um, and we offer those students a true diversity of thought and academic programming and opportunity to match with 10 undergraduate schools and colleges, uh, housing over 300 different academic majors and minors. Um, in terms of academic life, um, our students are required to apply directly to one school or college, but we're really built around this concept of one BU, which means our students have the opportunity to pursue coursework spanning all of our schools and colleges and pursue really unique interdisciplinary pathways within the university. As a BU student, you have the opportunity to pursue double majors, dual degrees, um, and really coursework spanning all 10 schools and colleges um, at, at your pleasure as you go. So you can really explore those academic interests, explore those things you're curious about, and find something that you're passionate about and interested in. Um, one of the defining characteristics of BU is the fact that we were chartered as a research university in 1867, and we were one of the first research universities in America, and we're currently known as a major tier one research institution with over a half billion dollars in funded research on our campus each year. Um, and what that means for undergraduate students, so there's so many different ways to be involved in the process of research, whether it's pursuing research through our undergrad research office, which funds about a million dollars of undergraduate research or just over that each year, uh, working with our Center for Career Development, uh, where we have over 4,000 internship opportunities available across our schools and colleges, uh, doing a study abroad program where you're able to travel and pair an internship with a really great cultural exchange. There's so much you can do um, to have that experiential piece of your academic life um, worked into the academic programming you're taking. And 
then you also just have the fact that we are located right in the great city of Boston. Um, our campus spans about one and a half miles of Commonwealth Avenue with the T, which is the train city system in Boston, running right through the center of campus. We're about a 15-minute subway ride into downtown. We're right across the street from Fenway Park, short walk to the shops and restaurants of Back Bay and museums and cultural institutions in the Fenway area. Um, there are so many opportunities right off our campus that our students can explore quickly, easily, and access right from uh, the campus in Boston. And that's all from a residential campus. As we guarantee housing all four years, about 80% of our students do live on campus. So um, that also opens the door for really robust uh, student life experiences and opportunities right on our campus. Over 450 clubs and organizations, Division I sports, club sports, intramural sports, you name it. There is always something happening on our campus. To talk a little bit more about that student life side, and particularly Jewish student life, I'd like to actually now turn things over to uh, Rabbi Ellie. So Rabbi Ellie, take things from here. Hello, Aaron, Amy, Anna, Atara, Benjamin, Billy, Daniel, Eitan, Isabel, Jared, Jordan, Josh, Leah, Liam, Luca, Michelle, Nava, Phil, and Tamar. Hi, I'm Rabbi Ellie from BU. It's so good to be here with you. BU has 4,000 Jewish undergrads, making it the biggest Jewish population of any private school in the United States. They come from all different kinds of Jewish backgrounds. At BU, we have a number of different Jewish student organizations, Hillel Chabad Maor and the Eloise Zell Center for Jewish Studies. Hillel itself has a four-story, 30,000 square foot building with over 13,000 student attendances per year across 400 programs, all of which are focused on helping students lead meaningful, joyous Jewish lives. BU Hillel has a kosher dining hall and any meal plan from BU works, so everyone is invited to eat at our building, which is centrally located right in the middle of BU's campus. We have study spaces, lounges, and most importantly, we have people, people who are here for you with 12 full-time staff members supporting your curiosities and passions through all four years of your time at BU. Everything we do is about making friends, building community, and exploring how Jewish life and learning is meaningful for you. There are lots of student-led programs social, religious, Israel, social justice. We also have 321 Jewish Learning Fellowship participants this year alone. And we have a lot of international travel to Israel and other places for alternative spring breaks and domestic travel as well, Shabbatonim and weekends off campus. Uh, we're here for you no matter what comes up. Uh, we're all about helping students to find friends, build community, and find what's meaningful and joyous for you about Jewish life. Everyone is coming from their own particular backgrounds, and we're here to help you in whichever way feels meaningful and joyous for you. Uh, we, again, have a kosher meal plan, an amazing Hilla building. Uh, we are right next to one of Boston's biggest Jewish communities. The Brookline community is just down the street from our campus and our Hillel, um, and there is amazing hundreds of ways to get involved with BU Hillel and across all the different diverse options going on on campus uh, with, again, 4,000 Jewish students. We have 13,000 student attendances at Hillel alone, thousands of more at the other Jewish uh, community events with Maor and Chabad and on campus itself. Please let me know if you have any questions. You can always email me, ellie at bu.edu. Uh, and we are, you can visit our website at bu.edu slash Hillel. Tons of options. Thanks to everyone for being here today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, BU. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate this wonderful group of institutions being here with us. I'm actually going to invite all of my colleagues to join me back on the screen here so you can see their smiling faces one more time before we wrap it up here. Let me share my screen now.
and give just a final reminder that this is one a, a large um, list of different presentations happening. So we hope that you will join us. There are two more sessions taking place immediately after this, but we hope that you'll also take a, a look at that Google search and use some of the institutions here, learn a little bit more about what they have to offer and see if it is a good fit for you as well. I'm going to also share in the chat one more time, the place where you can find the recordings within about a week for this session, along with all of the others. And then just a quick reminder before we officially wrap up here today, and that is that when you close your Zoom screen, you are going to get a very quick four question survey. Any feedback that you can provide about today's session will be most helpful. All right, I know the time always goes much too fast, but thank you everyone for being here to our panelists, for helping us learn more about these institutions and to all of you who have joined us live or are catching the report. We hope that you found a lot of useful information for your college search. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the event. Bye-bye.